Hey, welcome to Kingdom City. We're so happy that you could join us today for our Good Friday service. You know, this weekend is a significant weekend in the Christian calendar where we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you know, if your heart would just remain open today, we believe that this weekend could mark a significant milestone moment in your life. We're going to go to Pastor Mark and our incredible team right now, and we pray that this service would incredibly bless you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Good Friday, wherever you are around the world. Come on, can we give every person around you and around the world a big hand? Come on, let's give them a big hand clap. Thank you for coming to church. Every visitor, every new person, we're so glad you took the time to join us. And today we're doing something different. As I bring the word, my pulpit is my piano. And not only that, I've got a group of incredibly talented anointed singers. They're like family and they're here. They're going to help me preach today as we talk about the most pivotal event in human history, the night, the day that Jesus died, his death. And in Easter Sunday, I want to invite you, make sure you get back to church because we've got a resurrection message because our King is not dead, he's alive. Amen. And uh, if you've got your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 27, and I'm going to read a few verses. And really what I want to show you today and apply to every person who's listening there were four remarkable things that happened when Jesus died. Almost uncommon and supernatural. And they all mean something. So let's go to the book, Matthew chapter 27. Here's what it says from verse 45 onwards. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Verse 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened. Listen to this. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. You know, if you've been around church or any length of time, you'd understand the amazing importance of the death and resurrection of Jesus. I don't know if you've ever considered the weight of what happened. Four remarkable things happened. Now, crucifixion is not uncommon. Up to that point, some estimates say there were 30,000 men that had been crucified up to that point. So Jesus' death by crucifixion was common, but Jesus was not common. Jesus was not ordinary. And even though his death seemed ordinary, what happened around his death was extraordinary. Because four things happened. Number one, darkness filled the earth. It was daylight. And at the moment, see, an eclipse is not, it's very rare, but it's not supernatural. It's happened before and it'll happen since. But the timing at that moment when Jesus died, darkness covered the earth, it's prophetic. It's a picture of darkness. Darkness speaks of judgment. And in that moment, God judged his own son. So you and I don't have to be judged. I love the verse where it says, for he made him, God made Jesus. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Think about that, that literally God turned Jesus, God Himself, into judgment on the cross. And in our vernacular, He basically looked at Jesus like Jesus committed our sins. And Jesus was holy. He was God on the cross. And God now looks at us as the we are Jesus. He looks at us as though we committed no sin because at Calvary, darkness covered the whole earth. Just like the plague in Egypt, darkness covered and it preceded the death of the firstborn. Well, so darkness here preceded the death of God's firstborn. And in that moment, something happened. That dark moment was actually the brightest moment because in eternity, our lives were forever changed. The second thing that happened, there was an earthquake, which literally, again, is not uncommon, but to think of an earthquake happening at the same time as a solar eclipse is crazy. It doesn't happen. Both happened at the same time. 
coincidence? I don't think so. At the same moment Jesus died. See, you know what that tells me? Creation was groaning. The earth was reacting. This was God the Son literally dying upon a cross and literally nature was responding. Darkness covered the earth. The earth actually began to shake. Just when you think of darkness covering the earth, when you think of maybe darkness covering your life, maybe you think of things that are shaking in your world that you really wish didn't, there was a greater event where it was darker than what you're going through, where there was more shaking than what you're going through. And you know, God Himself took on the worst darkness and the most shaking so that you can live through your storm. You can live through your challenge. And I don't know what you're going through, but today represents the day where light breaks through. Today represents the day where God who still the storm can calm the quaking and the shaking that is happening in your world because He died for you. And you know what? Maybe it feels harsh. It feels heavy what you're going through. But you know, that day, it was darker. That day, it was heavier.
whatever your darkness, His name is more powerful. Whatever you're shaking, whatever is breaking, His name is more powerful. Good Friday happened. Earth groaned, creation shook, the world reacted even in nature because it wasn't an ordinary death. It wasn't a normal crucifixion. God the Son became sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God. You know, I love that the third thing that happened is how the veil got torn. We talked about this, but the veil being torn was so prophetic because, you know, this year our theme is intimacy with God. And whatever you think is stopping you from coming close to God, it's not there. The veil has been torn. You think there's some family addiction? It's not there. The veil has been torn. I don't care some circumstance, some socioeconomic challenge. The veil has been torn. Whatever you think is the reason you can't get closer to God today, your sin, your pain, this whole idea of this weekend is the veil was torn. No longer was it God just requiring one man to be able to get behind an altar. He said, now I have torn the entire barrier that separated me from you and because the veil is torn today all around the world I don't know what you're going through but I want to tell you the veil has been torn the veil has been torn I love this verse it says therefore we can run boldly into the presence of God to the throne of God and find grace and mercy in time of need. This is the power of what Good Friday represents. Whatever you think is keeping you away from God, it's not there. The veil's been torn. It's not there. So you can come into the presence of God right where you are. And you can literally, you can call unto Him for help. You can call unto Him for mercy. You can call unto Him whatever your need is. Whatever your need is, whatever it is you need, He's real. There's no more veil. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. I want defense. I rise You are my 
there is literally nothing in the way there's nothing in the way can you give him thanks for no more veils give you all the praise there's deliverance can happen even now there's healing that can happen now there's breakthrough you'll fail your family that can happen even now because he tore the veil 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 some of you can feel even things beginning to lift off you you know why because he tore the veil Good Friday, the veil was torn into from the top to the bottom. And this veil was not a thin veil, a small veil. It was an incredibly strong barrier that Jesus' death rendered completely shattered. Father, I thank you. Your presence is here even now in every room, right where people are. Thank you, God. You took on darkness so we could walk in light. You shook the earth so you can calm the storm in our world. And God, the veil was torn so we can run without shame or fear. That's Good Friday. That's Good Friday. And maybe the most remarkable thing, guys, I don't know if you've seen this one. This one is so crazy. This one is so crazy. It says... The graves were opened. Come on. <laughs> I mean, not one resurrection, mass resurrection. Come on. Yeah. It's like every grave that held a saint that day at the death of God himself, life was released into the grave and every grave vomited up its occupant. And people started walking through the city and appeared. Here's what it says. The Bible says they appeared to many. Imagine walking, hey, grandma, dad, what are you doing here? I was like, wow. And you know the message? Jesus is alive. He is real. So no wonder the early church was birthed in power. There's resurrected life. And you know, I'm not even talking about your life, someone literally coming back from the grave, even though, amen, let it be if that's what you need. But I want to tell you that there are dead things in your life that Jesus died so they could come alive again. And you know, I don't know if you are one of those dead people that is now walking around. You were once dead in your sin. You were once caught in your issue. But now today you have a story. Today you have a testimony. Today you have something to say. Look at the people around you right now. You're looking at a dead man, dead woman who is now alive because Jesus died and rose again. And that is why everybody has a story. Anybody got a story? I want to testify. Oh, I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. And I was running out of time. Sin separated. The bridge was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm. So you made a way across the grave. 
You might have come to church because someone invited you. You might have come to church out of habit. Might be the twice a year you come. But in a moment when our pastors get up, I believe the graves are about to split. And you're going to come out alive. And people are going to see you and say, I knew you. What happened? What happened when you went to church? I thought you were dead. I thought there was no more coming back from where you were from, but God is going to do remarkable things. So while every eye is closed, every head is bowed, why don't we stand to our feet if you're not already standing? Jesus, I thank you that you would move upon the hearts of every person. Where darkness is, light would come. Where there is a shaking happening, God, you would bring peace to the storm. Father, I thank you that people would run to you this year like they've never run to you before. And I thank you, God, that there would be so many testimonies of what you do that will change everything forever. So I cherish the honor of giving
Want you bless the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Wow, what a powerful word in a time of worship. You know, as Pastor Mark declared, today marks the day where light breaks through out of darkness. That God who stills the storm can calm the quaking that is happening around your life. You know, the only way that light can break through out of darkness is if that light lives inside of you. And I don't know what darkness has been surrounding your life. Maybe your future feels dark and depressing. Maybe the things that are surrounding your life just keeps crashing down on you. Today, you have an opportunity to receive that light and see darkness get displaced from around you. You know, Jesus declared in John 8, 12, He said this, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Imagine that, having the light of life with you, so that no matter what happens in your future, whatever comes for you, you have light, so darkness never stands a chance to overpower you. And if you're listening to this message, we want to give you an opportunity today to respond and to receive this light, to receive Jesus Christ into your life, and He will change everything. So if that's you right now, maybe you once followed Jesus and then you walked away, today is a great day to come home, try Him again and let Him redeem your life. But whatever your story is, I want to give you an opportunity right now to just repeat this prayer after me, but make it your own. And the Bible says that you will be saved. So if that's you right now, why don't you close your eyes wherever you are and would you pray together with me? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking my sin upon yourself and paying the price for my freedom. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Would you wash me clean? Would you be my Savior? Would you be my Lord? I want to follow you all the days of my life. Let your light shine brightly through my life and displace all darkness. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You know, if you said that prayer either for the first time or a recommitment, we want to say a massive congratulations to you. Everything changes from this point on. But we want to journey together with you. There's a link that's coming on your screen right now. We would love for you to give us your details so we can get resources to you, so our team can contact you and just do this life together with you. The future is going to be great. You know, we're so happy that you could join us today. Later on, there is a live stream that is coming out of KL. We'd love for you to join us on that. The links will be there on the screen. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notifications right away as soon as they're up. This weekend, we have Easter Sunday as well. And we would love for you to join us. But don't come alone. Why don't you invite someone in your world? Run a watch party from your home if you can. And let's see God transform our world and we together can bring the reality of God into our world. God bless you. Thank you once again for joining us. Have a great week. We will see you soon.